Hi, my name is Safe Carmen, and this is the introduction to the original Philly Shell program. Some people might ask, why would this guy do a entire program, four phases, on a, a style that gets more publicity than any other style in boxing? Well, the reason is, is because it's quite possible, it's quite possible that with all the videos on YouTube, uh, from all the people capitalized on the Philly Shell, uh, and the popularity of the Philly Shell, it's quite possible that you have never seen it actually done in its purity. Now, this is not to rag on people. This is not to rag on others who are putting up the Philly Shell and talking about the shoulder roll and things of that nature. It's not to rag on them. But the fact of the matter is, is that the original Philly Shell actually is being weeded out. You probably, as I said, have never seen anyone do the original Philly Shell. Because most of the people who knew the original Philly Shell are either dead, ill, or just don't want to be on YouTube. There are very few people who have mastered it, very few people who have been taught by the masters, the original masters of it. You will learn more about the Philly Shell and the original Philly Shell, which was never called the Philly Shell, actually, prior to maybe about 20, 25 years ago, unless you were in Philadelphia. There are other places, like in Michigan, where they didn't refer to it, you know, God forbid, as the Philly Shell. But we'll get to that when we talk about the history of the Philly Shell. Right now, the reason why I am doing a complete massive, the most massive program, most massive uh, um, uh, presentation on the Philly Shell is because I was asked to look at a video. And I had always looked at some of the videos based on recommendation to kind of critique what people were doing. But I looked at one particular video. And this particular video had this gentleman who was a pro boxer, a former pro boxer, and he was asked, what is the Philly Shell? Well, what this guy actually said was this. He said the Philly Shell was shoulder roll and cover from the left hook. Then I went and I looked to see what it was that people were saying about that particular video, and everybody just loved it. They loved the video. Now, again, I'm not ragging on that guy. The problem wasn't that people liked it. The problem was actually that he was considered an expert, and he said only two things about the Philly Shell. The Philly Shell was the shoulder roll and cover from the left hook. Now, some people might say, well, safe, what is wrong with that? Well, the problem is that the Philly Shell is not just the shoulder roll and just not covering from the left hook. Now, how can I say that? The shoulder roll is simply a way of avoiding punches, and particularly the way of avoiding right hands. That particular method, the shoulder roll, was done by Evander Holyfield. It's been done by uh, Mark, Mikey Garcia. It's been done even by Manny Pacquiao. Now, if you were in a standard boxing position, you may parry the jab, and the right hand is coming, you have no, you really, it's right up on you, so you look for a way of avoiding it, and what do you do? You parry the jab, and you just roll and come back. That's essentially what the shoulder roll is. Again, Evander Holyfield did it. Mikey Garcia did it. Fighters from, that fought from a very, very, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, with his attacking style, that there was a point where he even did the, the, the shoulder roll. Essentially, you're in this position, and when a punch comes up on you, you shoulder roll, and then you come back. That's it. It's not necessarily the Philly shell. What is the best way of avoiding a left hook? The best way of avoiding a left hook is to cover. That's it. I've seen Mike Tyson. If you watch enough of his fights, you'll see Mike Tyson cover from the left hook this way. So is the Philly shell a shoulder roll and covering from the left hook? Of course not, because people use those two methods in other styles. But since there is so much popularity, since there is so much invested in trying to stay in tune with the masses, people put up things about the Philly shell, and they have gotten the totally, they have gotten totally the wrong picture of what the original Philly shell was, which was actually a art of gym warfare perfected by people called the gym rats. All right, and we will, you will learn more about that in, in a history segment. 
So why am I doing this massive, this massive program on the Philly Show? Because my generation is one of the, is probably the only generation that actually was taught the original Philly Show. That's simply the way it is. My generation is actually the last generation that was taught the Philly Show by the masters. And I was taught by the masters of New Jersey gyms, but in particularly New York gyms. Very quickly, when I was about 15, 16, I would go from New Brunswick, New Jersey to Times Square Gym in New York City, in Times Square, hence the name Times Square Gym. And in there, there you would see certain fighters. You would see uh, Emil Griffith, the great welterweight, former welterweight champion, the late Emil Griffith. You would see Juan Laporte, uh, the former uh, uh, great uh, uh, featherweight, a perennial, a top 10 featherweight from back in the 70s. You would see a man by the name of Saul Mambi. Saul Mambi was one of the slickest boxers ever. But a lot of people don't know that even though he won a title at some point, his claim to fame was that he was one of the greatest gym warriors ever. And he made his home in Times Square Gym. It was people like him who I asked certain questions of. Uh, people like him who took me aside. There were gym rats who were less famous, far less famous than Saul Mambi, who would be hated by managers. Managers would walk in and say they did not want their professional fighter to spar that particular person. Why? Because that particular person was so slick that if cameras really were on that spar match between him and that professional fighter, the fight probably would be called off. Or it would, it would seriously affect the betting, the betting line on that particular fighter. So gym rats were fighters who fought from the style that is considered, that is naturally called, that is now called the Philly Shell. And these particular fighters were some of the slickest ever. Again, you will hear about that in the history section. But suffice to say, the reason why I felt that I had to do this introduction was because the original Philly Shell style is dying out. It is dying out. In spite of all the material on YouTube talking about the Philly Shell, most of the people talking about the Philly Shell today, they get their information from the same place you, the average fan, gets your information. Simply by watching maybe Floyd Mayweather or watching old films of people, then repackaging that and saying, this is the Philly Shell. Again, my generation is the last generation to learn it from the real grandmasters of the Philly Shell, and I'm presenting it to you. This is phase one. There will be four phases. It will be massive, and there will be nothing that the original Philly Shell has ever contained that you will not learn in those four phases. Now, is the Philly Shell for beginners? Actually, the Philly Shell is not for beginners. There are certain things that I expect. There are certain things I assume, and I will assume that you know how to throw basic punches. The Philly Shell is not something that you generally teach to people when they first walk into the gym. So it is not for beginners. Beginners can look at it, beginners can work on it, and they can get a head start on learning it. And they can learn many things that their trainer quite likely will never ever teach them because they may not know. So is it for beginners? No, it's not for beginners. But for sure, it is for you if you want to know the history before it dies out completely, if you want to know the history and how to actually function in the original Philly Shell. So when you look at this program, look at this program as something that is not necessarily for beginners, but it is historical. It is also something that you can get a jump on. So when you want to really learn how to fight from the Philly Shell, when you really want to learn it, if you really want to learn it, this is the program. This is phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four. We'll follow this phase one program, and you will actually learn the Philly Shell. You will not only learn how to do it, you will learn how to attack from it. You will learn, of course, how to defend from it. But you will also learn how to teach it. So if you want to train your son, if you want to train your daughter, if you want to train your wife, whatever the case might be, you will be taught not only how to fight, how to defend and attack from it, but also you will be taught how to teach it. So this is also a program for trainers also. Because you will get theory, you will get positions, you will get focus mitt drills, dozens of focus mitt drills. You will get interactive drills that you can do with your partner. So this is for people who want to fight from it. There are people who want, this is for people who want to teach it. This is for people who want to know about it before it dies out 
completely. It is on a four tier. It is on in a four tier type of layout. So that four tier type of layout will essentially be telling you this is what you're defending. This is how you're going to defend it. This is how you install these skills with the focus mitts, and this is how you work with a partner. That is the four-tier way that I will be teaching you the original Philly shell. What you will be defending, how you will defend it, focus mitt drills that install that skill into the person you're working with, and also interactive drills that you can do with a partner with boxing gloves. Okay? So, phase one will be mostly on defense, but it will also take you into pre-sparring. Phase two will take you further, phase three even further, phase four will take you into the mastership, complete mastership of the Philly shell. So again, why did I decide to do this introduction? Because it is quite likely with the thousands of videos that you have on the Philly shell from some of the most popular people, it is quite likely you have never seen the original, the original Philly shell. So this particular program is made to teach you what the Philly shell is, it's made to teach you how to defend from it, it's made to teach you how to attack from it, and it's made to teach you how to teach the Philly shell. There are many things, there are many things, and I cannot go into them only in this particular introduction, but throughout the different phases, throughout the different programs and the segments, you will get more information as to what you have been missing when you've been watching many of these videos on YouTube. One of them is, did you know, and this is asking a question, did you know that some of the most aggressive fighters in the history of boxing actually fought from the Philly shell? Did you actually know that? That some of the most aggressive fighters, some of the fighters who were just attacked throughout a fight, did you know many of them were actually fighters that used the so-called Philly shell? Only in the last 20-some 20 so, 20 years did the Philly shell become synonymous with just defense and fighting and retreat. So many of the drills I will be showing you will show you how you can be aggressive, how you can move forward and still be fighting from what is essentially the original Philly shell. So again, this program is concise. This program is complete. This program is comprehensive. Many things that you will see, you have not seen anywhere else. Many things that you have seen are things that you were never told. Many, of th many things that you have seen are things that if you look at the old timers, you will compare it to this and say, yes, this is actually what I am learning from Safe Carmen and, 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 and the UMA Fight Camp. What I'm learning is the original Philly shell. This program was a necessity. It was my duty. It was something that I was called on to do. Not by a mystical God, but I was called, not by a God, but I was called on by people who I actually spoke to and said, listen, what do you think about what this guy is doing? What do you think about that guy, what that guy was doing? And I was essentially, essentially told, listen, young man, you go out, you do this program. If you need any advice, then you come to me. Why is this program necessary? Because it is dying out. It is a dying breed. The original Philly Shell has become something that most people don't know. It again, Philly Shell is synonymous with just simply doing this and moving in retreat and this and that. And people are selling it. People are selling it. Why? Because it's the most popular style in existence today. And it's very hard to have a Facebook page when you're ded that's dedicated to boxing. It's very hard to have a YouTube channel that's dedicated to boxing. It's very hard to have a Twitter account that is somehow connected to boxing and not talk about the Philly shell. So it has become more or less a hustle of many people in order to gain a following. In spite of all that, many of you have never seen it in its purity. This program, the second program, the third program, and the fourth program, you will be introduced, you will be taken through, and eventually if you follow the instructions, if you follow the material in these four programs, you will actually become a master of the original Philly Shell. All right, so start working, take out your notebook, uh, get your coffee, get your tea, your soda, your water, whatever, uh, settle in, and let's go, under, let's go under the roof. Let's go under the hood of the Philly Shell. In the next segment, check out the history segment before you start working, because the history segment will help you, will give you some information that you certainly will know, that you certainly want to know, 
and the history uh, segment where I talk about the history of the Philly Show will help you to understand some of the techniques you will be seeing, some of the maneuvers you will be seeing, some of the transitional positions and, and, and maneuvers you will be seeing in the, uh, in the future material. All right? All right, my name is Safe Carmen. Let's get busy.